Hello friends and family. Thanks for joining me for my daily scent of the day video. It's a really beautiful spring day here in central Virginia. I am starting to crave more and more my lighter fragrances, um, ones that have maybe more a more green feel or even a light pink feel to them. And I've been thinking about this one fragrance for quite a bit and decided it's time to finally give it a full day of wear. And um, just to be transparent, I did put this on last night as my scent of the evening to kind of test it out in terms of how it develops and the longevity and all of that. And we are talking about none other than Coriander from Jean Couturier. 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 <laughs> Jean Couturier. There, I got it. This is the Eau de Parfum Concentration. There is an EDT. And they are very similar. My understanding is that this one is just obviously much uh, deeper and more intense than the Eau de Toilette version. The bottle design gives away what you get here. This is a very classic Shipra uh, perfume. It was launched in 1973. So think about that. This perfume is nearly 50 years old. So hats off to you, little perfume, that you have made it through the world of fragrances and all that has come and gone, and you are still out there kicking and doing your thing. This is a very, very affordable and gorgeous perfume. It is in the range of, I think you can find it somewhere between 17 ish, 16, $17, and $25, especially if you go on discount sites like FragranceNet. It's, I even made the mistake of purchasing two uh, because I was so excited to add it to cart months and months ago when I did the haul for this that I accidentally added two. So I have an extra of this one uh, for later or maybe a giveaway or something. Let me be clear, this is by no means a safe blind buy for anyone. It is a peculiar fragrance, if you ask me, one that if you're not familiar with the style of fragrance, you probably would not enjoy at all. Like I said, it's a Shipra. It reminds me very much of two perfumes. One is Chanel number no. 19, the EDT version of that. It's got that green, uh, aldehydic, almost smells like fresh money, like paper money uh, to me. It also has a hint of cabochard. If you have tried cabochard and you know what I'm talking about, drop me a note in the comments. I still have cabochard around here somewhere. It's in the back of one of these shelves in this closet. It's one that I have a hard time wearing because it's so pungent. Uh, but if you're in the mood for that one and it's a really cold, crisp day, you can pull it off, but it is strong. This one is a more ladylike, dainty version of number 19 and cabochard. Uh, and some other people on, well, on Fragrantica in the line that says, this reminds me of the number one um, perfume that this reminds people of is Soir de Lune by Sicily. Soir de Lune by Sicily may be minus, according to the reviews, minus a honey and a peach note that Soir de Lune has. So I still find this a, a peculiar fragrance, but one that wafts through the air quite cleanly and nicely. It has a prominent top note of coriander, which I have to admit, it was just months ago that I learned that coriander is the seed of the cilantro plant. Yes, I'm 46 years old and just, just learned that. And I have cooked many, many years with cilantro and cooked many years with uh, ground coriander and just figured that out. Apparently, I'm the last person on planet Earth uh, to know that. It has aldehydes at the top. If you don't like aldehydes, stay away from this. They do come through pretty prominently. It has angelica, bergamot, and orange blossom at the top. I think it opens very green herbaceous and a little bit medicinal is my opinion in the middle it has rose which i do not pick up at all geranium which is in my thumbnail i wanted to include the notes that stood out to me so in the thumbnail you're going to see coriander you'll see that angelica geranium a lang alang and you also see an attempt to capture oak moss <laughs> in the um in the thumbnail as well as well, I mentioned Angelica, yeah. So other notes in the middle. Uh, so rose geranium, violet root, alang-alang, iris, lily, and jasmine. And I don't get jasmine out of this at all. 
in the base oak moss, which is classic for a cheaper fragrance. Vetiver, patchouli, I get a hint of the patchouli. Civet, I don't get any civet. It's not a very onomalic fragrance to me at all. It is very green, green and herbaceous, a little bit aromatic. You also have musk and sandalwood. It does have a bit of woodiness to it. So I did wear this, like I said, last night to bed. Um, it mellowed down quite a bit after a couple of hours and became this nice green woody fragrance, sort of subtle. Uh, my husband liked it. He commented when I came to uh, sleep, you smell really nice, what is that? He found it pleasant. And if you know my husband, he either immediately likes a fragrance, immediately dislikes a fragrance, or doesn't smell it at all, like his nose doesn't register it. So for him to call this out as a fragrance that he likes, I thought was important. And I also was shocked by it because it is such an odd fragrance. Oh, by the way, it also has some hints of like aura. Uh, from Mugler. Some hints, not quite, because this is a nice, round, lush, green, also a little bit sweet fragrance. I would not consider coriander sweet at all. It has the greenness of um, the Mugler one, but it also, like I said, is aldehydic, so you get those sort of soapy notes there at the top um, and through the middle that may be very off-putting, particularly for younger noses that are not into the more vintage fragrances. This is a vintage fragrance, so keep that in mind. And just because I like to experiment with combinations, I also in my um, elbow crooks and on my wrists today applied an oil from Kumba Made, K-U-U-M-B-A Made, and it's called Sedona Journey. This one smells very medicinal also in spa-like. It has frankincense and myrrh and sandalwood, which I think amps up the coriander even more and gives it a little bit of that elixir thing going on, but not quite too heavy in that direction. So I uh, think I'm gonna enjoy wearing this all day. I certainly enjoyed it in the evening last night. I don't think this is a love. I think this is a like and an appreciation for the composition from the 70s. And hey, respect and hats off to a fragrance that has lasted for decades and decades, half a century at this point, among a million and one competitors out there uh, in the fragrance world. So by the way, this is a very, to me, unisex fragrance. It does not lean feminine at all. And perhaps a tad, just a tad, it leans to the masculine side, maybe dead center. Not quite sure. It is marketed toward women. This is one that I would certainly not suggest blind buying, but if you like green fragrances, if you like bizarre and strange fragrances, if you like fragrances that are slightly challenging but interesting, this might be one that you want to pick up. And certainly at the price point, you know, it's not going to hurt your wallet to try it. So, and again, the EDP concentration, not the toilette. I can't speak to that one. And it layers quite nicely with these incense -y kinds of oils as well. So that is my review for today. I hope you have a fantastic day. Thank you for joining me. If you're new, please consider subscribing. If you're returning, love you guys. Thanks for hanging out this morning. Take care.